Hello? Yes? Call Nancy and tell her I have a... a giant hot <laughs> piping bowl of beef stew in my pants. You do? I spilled yingling in my <laughs> shoe again, Mommy. You have? I usually stick to Guinness because when I do tequila, I lose my pants. Thank you. We got one! What do you say, Al? What do you say, Al? Oh, come on now, cut. It's out. <laughs> You can jerk off in my tits if you want. And I thought, great, I'm in. That's what she said. No time. But she did. No time. <laughs> they threw me through a window. You serious? What the hell happened? Hell of a bye. Hell of a bye. <laughs> Three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Two Critical Podcast. I'm Thomas. That's Rob. Uh, we're kind of running and gunning tonight. So this is episode 14 of the Two Critical Podcast. Rob, give everybody the rundown if you can. So in full disclosure, we weren't feeling very creative in terms of what we wanted to talk about today. Um, we've got a guest that we really want to get on that I think we're doing next week. But in the meantime, we were going to do just a solo, well, duo episode with just the two of us in no We guests. had no ideas. We wanted to do something big, something with a theme. Something with yeah. costumes, right? We, we, we even we even physically saw each other today at the warehouse, which is totally, totally random to do on like uh, in the middle of the week, right? I was doing my thing. You were doing your thing. We were like, let's get together. Let's do some samurai swords and some funny hats. Three amigos. There's going to be a thing, a Cinco de Mayo theme, something, nothing. And nothing. nothing. We had a couple of, couple of mediocre ideas. And right. uh, I said... To hell with it. I'm going to put a thing on Instagram and say, anyone want to come on the podcast tonight? And surprisingly, we had more than one taker, yep. but uh, the first person that committed said they're in. The, he's a gentleman named Philip Taylor. The Literally, the only information I know is he's into comic books and Marvel and comic movies and things of the such. Okay. Um, he, he said he wants to go by Phil. Uh, okay. So, Phil Taylor. Um, oh. Phil? He uh his his Instagram handle is the one true nerd king, which Phil? I think. Hey, Phil. I think Mitch Halleck would argue. Whoa. Um, we might have to have, have a nerd, nerd off. We might have to have a nerd off. That's exactly what I was gonna say. So uh yeah, he seems to be into a lot of the same type of things that we are. Yep. Um, guns, girls, Guidos. I don't know much. So if he comes on can, and it's no, 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 terrible, it right there. That's fine. Um. So Philip Taylor is in the in the waiting room. We're gonna call him Phil. Phil, ladies and gentlemen, on the Two Critical Podcast, episode fourteen. We have no idea what's gonna happen. Anything is possible. Dogs and cats living together, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Phil Taylor. Hey, sorry about that. One second here. I just realized my camera's off. Huh. That's Phil Taylor's um, blue steel face for sure. Look That's that my photo. blue steel. That's mm. blue steel. It's insane. He looks like he looks like a you look like a younger Paul Hollywood. Oh, well that's that's probably a little too complimentary for me, actually. <laughs> so I'm Thomas, and that's Rob. You've been talking to Rob uh, on social media, I believe, today. Um, you you have a co-pilot with you? Uh, yeah. Sorry, I could probably switch that over. Just no, leave it. Looking leave at my it. ugly room. <laughs> no, leave it. Why would you? So uh, welcome, yeah, welcome it, to the it, Two Critical Podcast. Thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks for the invitation, or the open invitation, and then just humoring me when I said, "Yeah, <laughs> hey, this is this is how stuff happens." It's it it kind of started an avalanche for us because when there were no guests, now there are possibly twelve or fifteen already in the chamber. So we we thought, well, you know, we we had nothing at the beginning, and now uh, this could be something good for the future. So. Yeah um yeah we'll see we'll take it from there yeah i mean our, our thought is we've had a couple episodes where it's just us and for the most part i mean we can we can rant and talk about the same shit that we always do there's a little bit of news today that you know uh we were going to get into but i think that mm -hmm. subject matter might work with you also <clears throat> but um you know it i like when we record with us it's fun sometimes but it's always nice to have someone else in and 
you know what? It's just, we're going to try it if, uh, if it works out perfect. And if not, we, uh, we don't put the open invitation online but so far. I mean, you came ready with the background and everything. And I almost wore a sweatshirt that is the exact same version of that t-shirt. So I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Might've gotten a little weird. Um, no, yeah, it's, it's totally great. I, I, I sincerely appreciate the opportunity. I, I dabble a little bit on the Instagram side of things, um, doing comic book live sales shows, auctions, things of that nature, doing some yep. social media. And I'm actually just now taking over a production studio um, so video production, podcasting, all the fun stuff, we'll be doing that professionally for the hospital system I work for. So, um, awesome. You know, Very cool. Great now, experience it, for me. So, <laughs> so ha, ha, has podcast. the, has the video side or the media side of things always been something that has interested you and then you got into another field or is it always been uh, part of what you do? You know, um, I used to do web systems, uh, internal communications platforms specifically um, with Microsoft 365, Jive, other platforms similar to that. And with COVID, when COVID hit the way it did, um, obviously the entire workforce, especially in healthcare, could not slow down for a minute, you know, right. to kind of like gauge what they're going to do like so many other workforces could do. They had to immediately ramp things up even more but they had to do it in a completely displaced manner. And so all of a sudden that internal Microsoft like system became very reliant on teams and yep. having video conference meetings. So all of a sudden I kind of became like a streaming guru yep. um, around the organization and that progressed into video. And so over this last year, it, it sounds terrible, but COVID was very big for my career um, yeah. in, in, in that way. And that's what kind of got me then more into you know, I, I worked in radio for a few years before in the past and things of that nature. So I was familiar with it um, and I was able to jump into it quickly. But for all intents and purposes, it was really the, the COVID thing that said, we need to make a production studio where we can do our streaming for all of our social media. We can make our own productions. We're not spending millions of dollars with other production companies coming in and doing different campaigns. This didn't make sense. So we've uh, started doing that for ourselves now. So do you work in a hospital every single yep. day? Okay. Mm -hmm. So did you find that there is a disconnect between the management and you trying to figure out, look, everybody, we need to get stuff out on social media. We need to be making uh, this many pieces of content and people need to be present to do these things. Like, was that a struggle for you at the beginning? Um, actually, it was probably more of a struggle on um, uh, getting the, the community to know where to go to find it in all honesty. Um, yeah. Our management team was very um, enthusiastic about trying to get news out there, right? But because the organization and, and so many organizations are so um, siloed or um, I consider it also a branding issue because every single hospital system has got like 20, 30 brands that they have to trumpet and, and, and put out there and it dilutes their presence on the internet. And when they have something important to say, where are you saying it? Which one? Are you saying it on all of them? Or are right. you saying it on one of them? Right. And because of that, people don't really know which voice to go and search out for very often. And so our biggest issue was really trying to consolidate that voice into um, a, a regular uh, regular streaming source where we could do a, an update every day. You know, we would drop COVID updates. We would have our CEO and we would have our chief medical doctors doing informationals every single day. And I would say that they were on it. Um, they actually had that vision right from the get-go. So I was okay. lucky in that manner. Yep. Um, and, and I'm in Michigan too. So okay. um, we've been a very hard hit state. We were hit very early. <laughs> and we were been still hit lately. <laughs> right. um, hit them early but, and hit them hard, just like prom night. Pretty much, pretty yeah. much, you know, you've been speaking to some of my friends. So. <laughs> well, no, so it's interesting that you say that. So um, I have owned my own production company for about 18 years and I do similar work. So social media and commercials and viral ads and things like that. 2020, and as you say, you hate to say it, but 2020 was my best year in business in 18 years. So I do prop rentals for television and film that fell through the floor nobody was doing anything as far as that was concerned. However, the videography side of, of the work just started to, people came out of the woodwork. So the real estate videos that I was doing three, four a week, 
because nobody wanted so people still buying homes but nobody wanted to set foot in any of these places and i remember at the beginning you know there was this whole thing about uh uh well people oh i'm sorry essential workers i'm sorry oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. you would think you would think that would be drilled in my head by now so but at the very beginning when when the uh, the lockdown happened and then there was this whole discussion about essential workers who could go out and who couldn't things like that mm. i think within three weeks of all that happening i was out being doing these real estate videos and here i am in the house all by myself you, you'd pull up and maybe the realtor would be out there or they would you know you'd go in with the uh the the, the key box and you're in all these homes you're like how in the hell did i end up doing this in the middle of a lockdown how how is this essential work but it was and then it it kind of uh it, it kind of kept going from there and then everybody needed to do viral videos about their companies letting people know how they were responding to covid and what they were going to do next and uh you know letting people know that we're still here we're still in business and this is how we're going to change things but i ended up doing a couple of jobs with some pretty big hospitals in massachusetts and um the, the one doctor whose idea this was, it was like pulling teeth for him trying to get everyone else to participate in this thing because there was, there was that disconnect. There was the older generation, then there's the young kids and nobody seemed to understand how to do it. And um, that, that was a struggle. I saw, I saw that guy struggling uh, in particular, trying to get all these people together. Of course, when, it, when he finished it, and then he launched the, the videos in the series of videos. All the other departments came to him and said, oh, well, I want to do one of those too. Because people realized how, how valuable it was. And then, like you said, how the, there are all the different uh, departments or uh, organizations within the one organization, right? Mm -hmm. um, the, we, did a, we did a thank you video for first responders for a company, um, a huge company in Massachusetts. And they just wanted it to be from the family that started the business. And, but they had so many companies that they had to speak to that at one point they wanted to do six different versions of this one particular video. And then at the very end, thank, thankfully I said, well, why don't we just take all your logos from all your different organizations and then let's just have them fly on screen, you know, do whatever. But, you, but you're right, you know, the, you, how do you get all those people to talk to each other and just go to one place every day, you flip open your phone and then there's the news about what you're doing, there's your announcements. And then of course, have the general public come there every day and find out what's going on. It's extremely sure. difficult, but good uh, yeah. if you're in the video business. Yeah, our CEO is, um, uh, uh, she's, just, I, I think she's under 40. Yeah. Um, she's very tech savvy. There you go. Um, she recently, recently took the position in the last four years. Okay. So, and she took it over from a lot of that good old boy, much older generation kind yeah. of situation. And lucky for us, the entire C-suite had turned over in many yeah. shapes or forms. Not all of them, but a lot of the people that had that kind of thinking, you know, that, that very, that very like, you know, well, it ain't broke, don't think, or social media is for just, you know, sharing statuses, not Pitch doing important things. And my food. Put one of those hash browns at the end, you know, like hash brown team Cobra Kai or something. And then send it to the internet. So I want to see, you know, we don't know much about you. Um, we, you know, we're, we're definitely new to, to talking with you. It seems like you've obviously got some comic comic book interest. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing the star Wars behind you, the Batman shirt. I think we're going to have some similar topics. I want to throw out there. Uh, I don't know if you saw the news today, We've talked about it on our podcast for a while now, and I had this whole tirade, I think in two different separate episodes about how Disney plus needs to change their format because I loved all the shows they've done Mandalorian winter Falcon and winter soldier, uh, WandaVision. And I said, they need to make this a weeknight event. Did you see the news today about Loki? Yeah, Wednesdays. Yeah, Wednesday. so I actually I actually shared it on there. It's like Wednesdays the new Fridays. Yeah, um, yeah. Or Friday, yeah, Friday, yeah. I mean, I I feel like I knew this was coming eventually because it made too much sense. Wednesdays are the new Fridays. But I feel like I told Tom today, anybody that has a network show on a Wednesday night saw this news and went, you got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> yeah. 
good. They're gonna they're gonna move. I mean, they're gonna move some shows from Wednesdays to Tuesdays or Thursdays. That, I mean, I know it sounds crazy, but that's going to happen. Um, but it's only a matter of time before Disney Plus has a full slate. Like they're gonna have a, a Star Wars Bad Batch on Monday night, and then a you know Falcon and Winter Soldier two on Tuesday nights, followed by Mandalorian season three on Wednesdays. I would not be surprised if they have anywhere from a two to four night slate at least half the year with new shows coming out. I mean, you saw the announcement they made with Marvel the other day, you know, with all the different shows. I mean, it, it's going to be insane what they're doing. And, you know, I see the Batman shirt. I know you're a Marvel guy too. Um, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm guessing you like the Disney plus stuff, but what, what are your thoughts on the Wednesday night change? I, I love the Wednesday night change. Not going to lie, 100% on board with that. Um, I'm I'm very much feeling in a similar fashion too that Disney, and, and I think a lot of people are learning from the Netflix model where Netflix would just dump everything. And if you wanted to see it, you'd just be like, meh, cancel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Saw, saw Stranger Things in one night. You want to see real crazy? Yep. See you next year. Can't wait, how long do we have till... Uh... Yeah. yeah. So I, I think they realize too. Those because kids will be twenty-two how, by the time we see them again. Yeah. So I think they realized that they didn't have enough content to even still be able to do that and keep people. So they had to spread things out on the weekly basis, kind of like Amazon had been doing with you know, um, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel and, and things of other sh- other great shows that they've got on there. Um, so yeah, I, I do like that. I think like there's going to be a Young Avengers night. I got a feeling you know a lot of that's going to be happening like the. The Disney Plus TGIF kind of thing, you know. Thunderbolts, gotta, yeah. Mm, it's going to happen. And, I'm and, okay with it. <laughs> and I, a, I love, I love the Netflix. I love the instant gratification where you can just keep watching. But I got to tell you, I, I forgot how much. I'm sorry, Rob. Rob, I got to jump in quick, real quick, just so everybody knows that Netflix, we are still watching. Yeah. <laughs> just let me fucking watch. Okay. Yeah. Someone should have got on immediately when the lockdown happened and reprogrammed that little button and just said, stream it, send it. A full send button is what they need. Sorry, you, should have the op- you should have the option to turn off that. But um, I, I forgot how much I loved the weekly appointment viewing of a great show. Partially because it's been a while, probably since Game of Thrones ended, that I've had a show that I felt like I had to watch every week. And... Tom and I were talking about it as much as like Stranger Things season four is going to come out. I'm going to watch the whole thing in probably two nights, but I'll watch the whole thing in two nights and be done with it and go, well, I guess I'll see them in a year and a half if we're lucky for season five. But I mean, Falcon Winter Soldier, the only complaint I had is Fridays. I'm, I'm all over the internet doing our stuff. I see spoilers. I don't want to get spoiled. I mean, I wake up very early as it is. But we're waking up at the crack of dawn to watch it so that it doesn't get spoiled. And where it's on Fridays, we we generally record on Tuesday or Wednesday and record and release the episode on Friday. We could really not do a lot of content about that because we'd be releasing it on Friday. But by then, the next episode is out. Who wants to hear us talk about two episodes ago? So I'm thrilled now because we can record Wednesdays and we'll have already watched Loki that day. And we're not strictly like a comic book movie podcast. We're we're here to to scratch an itch. You know, we we like to bullshit. We like to talk. We're obsessed with the comics and movies. But you know, we we've had comedians on. We're trying to get people from the Curse of Oak Island on. We think we're going to. We've had hopeful talks with them. Um, we just had a guy last week. A great interview with another podcaster from Britain. Uh, with a great podcast that he's working on. We just want to talk to people that are interesting. Like we have no delusions. We don't think this is our future in terms of a career. This is something we do for fun. This is therapy. This is an outlet. And now with that, like we have an automatic now, any Wednesday that we're not sure what to talk about. Once Loki starts, we, we know what we can talk about. Um, But I'm just, I'm curious to see with Hulu Netflix, if any one of their networks goes to a weekly format, I don't think they will, at least for a while, but I'm wondering if they see how often, I mean, Loki's going to be trending every single week on Twitter for at least 10 weeks when that series comes out. Stranger Things is going to trend for five days and then everyone will have finished the, the saga. So 
Um, I guess this is a long winded, not really even question, just kind of me ranting about how great Disney Plus well, is. Yeah, but but where's get the used to it. Where's the competition, though? I mean, I think probably the only competition people thought was coming would be from uh, HBO. And now they're now they're even they're they're changing their tune. Now they're saying all their movies are going to go back to the theaters. So, yeah. you know, in 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 people at HBO, agents and things like that, they were rewriting even the um, the salaries that they were going to pay for these people that were crewing these programs that were going to go directly to uh, HBO. Now all that's changed too. So, I think that's the only organization that would even have. Um, the ability to put out content that people would want to watch like on a Friday night or a Sunday night or something like that. But as HBO does, they shot themselves in the foot, I think. Well, I think, you know, in my opinion, Hulu is TiVo, right? I it mean, is. Everything from yeah, televisions yeah. on Hulu comes there once a week is what, what you didn't want to put on your DVR when you actually had cable. Right. You could find it on Hulu. And yep. Hulu's owned by Disney. End of the day, Disney's still the major shareholder. So yep. chances are it's going to merge, in my opinion, at some point in time. If they just buy out the rest of everybody in there, it could. That might be how they part. fill out a weekly slate. That might be how they me, make in my a opinion, full. Yeah. That would be how they did it. That, that would be how Disney finally says, look, here's all the ABC programming. Here's the other stuff that the other streamers don't want to actually create their own service for. So we're going to fold them in. We're going to pay them French, you know, all, all the different um, uh, whatever fees they would be. Um, and then there would be Disney Plus. Disney Plus would be basically the ABC of streaming and it would go that route. That's just my opinion. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but that's where I could see that parallel between Hulu and then I thought Amazon Prime was going to be a bigger contender. A couple of years ago, I saw all the money Amazon's making. I thought Prime would be jumping in a lot harder than they have. Yeah. And they're doing some good stuff, but they're just like, but it's always one show at a time, good stuff. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, it's like, with, with like the amount of money, really cool. with the amount of money that Amazon has, they should be cranking out so much original content. Um, but again, that you, Disney, it's interesting. We just talked about the people, the, the disconnect between the older generation and then the 40-something CEO that's tech savvy. Mm -hmm. These these are the people now that the smart companies are starting to listen to. I mean, Disney Disney's doing it right. And, uh, you, you know, who's going to watch something at 7 o'clock on, like, CBS? Who, who, that's that's not going to be what people are going to do. And Boomers. for me, for, for, for me, like yeah. one of one of the one of the worst things is when I watch television, I want to be treated like an adult. I, I want to see if if you're going to do a cop show or uh, you know you're going to do something about the mafia, you, you can't put it on basic cable. It's got to be violent. It has to be graphic. It, it has to be realistic. realistic. You're not. You're not even doing the show justice if you if you take a program like that to, uh, you know, a, a, a CBS or yeah. yeah. It just you just not like you look at it now. I remember watching Twenty Four. Now that was a show that I would gather with friends and we would we would you know watch every episode and things Jack like that. Jack Bauer and, Power Hour. Yeah. But when you go back and watch Twenty Four now, oh boy, weak. I mean, <laughs> like, you know, he, how many times can she get kidnapped? Alicia Cuthbert. How many fucking times can she get kidnapped? You said kidnapped. I thought I had a stroke for a second. That's uh, fantastic. No, that's what, it wasn't just you. Yeah. <laughs> you said it. I, I'm rewatching the X-Files with my daughter right now. Uh, uh, I, was, and, I was thinking about the X-Files today. Oh, dude, can you, can a, you imagine it's the It's amazing how weak Dana Scully is now. Like I used uh, to look back and think like, Dana Scully was a badass. I'm like, wait a minute. She, she she gets like she gets pwned. She she's been kidnapped. We're in season four. She's been kidnapped at least four times. Right, <laughs> at least once yeah. a season. Fox is bailing her ass out, and it's yeah. kind of like I wanted to show a strong female character to my daughter. It's time to take off the heels, <laughs> Dana. Um, well, yeah, you got to go with Alien. You got to go with Alien. Is it too graphic? To go any oh, I've, I've, No, I, I've shown my daughter that movie. Aliens. How old is she? Uh, she's thirteen. Oh, uh, yes. 14. 
Yeah. I got a 13 year old son. It's, it's getting to that fun point where I can really introduce him to more stuff. You know, when he was younger, it's like, all right, here's ET. And you know, it, there's not a lot of movies that I loved when I was a kid. I mean, you know, he loved ghostbusters. He watched the Ninja turtle movies, stuff like that. But even like some of the Batman stuff, like I can show him like the Schumacher Batmans when they're eight, no one cares. You know, there's nothing violent in that. It's as bad as it gets with, in terms of like actual violence. God damn it. That's not all. But you know, like I wasn't ready to show him Jack Nicholson when he was eight. you know but now now he's getting into all the marvel stuff and uh it's it's a lot more fun when i can actually go back and show him you like he watched happy gilmore recently and watching him laugh his ass off it like i felt like it was me watching it for the first time you eat a piece of shit for breakfast? <laughs> oh, and of course, because he's 13, he thought that was the funniest goddamn thing he's ever heard. Yep. Are you too good for your home? Yeah, no, I, I, I feel that 100%. 100%. So tell us, about, uh, tell us about the YouTube streams that you do. What are you, what are you putting on those? Um, you know, right now we're just doing mostly um, comic book-like content. We're actually doing a thing where we actually watch a show and then you can start it at the same time you're watching the show. And it's like watching a show with friends. So we don't actually play the show. You just listen to us talking to each other about what things are going on at the exact same time. And so you can actually start it and listen and you can, you know, listen with two or three of us, depending on what's the show, you know, things that need to talk about things in the background. It's a little distracting, but it's something different. It's kind of like a live reaction to previews, but we actually do it through a show. That's pretty um, cool, actually. I like that just kind of doing some new ideas, taking things like that. Um, Throw it against the wall, really see doing, what sticks, right? Yeah, yeah, we're just taking a bunch of different ideas, but mostly comic book orientated. Um, we did a joking uh, ASMR nerd news. It's just quietly spoken in this voice so you can listen to it without waking up your wife early in the morning. <laughs> you know, things, just whatever the hell we want to do. It's right now, it's just a lot of shtick. So we've been testing and trying a couple of different things and we'll see what begins to pull out, but we've been having a lot more success on Instagram. And so right now we're kind of sticking with that to do a lot of our testing. And then we're going to start to put them into longer formats on YouTube. We've been doing some interviews with a lot of different comic book artists. Um, so right now I'm trying to work on one with uh, David Nakayama. Um, uh, so he's been doing a lot of great art and, you know, just talking about the covers that they're working on, what's their process, what's their inf their inspiration, things of that nature. So we've got there. we've got a few comic book artists and uh, writers that we're we're getting on, but we are uh, attending Terrificon, which is the largest comic con in New England, um, in the middle of the summer. So we're trying to set it up where we're actually going to meet with these people in person. And we, we rented a booth there and we're going to have our own setup with recording devices, everything. So we can do in-person meetings. Secret recording devices. Yeah. No one's going to know. Uh, <laughs> no one knows. But no. yeah. So it's, it's funny because we're, we're trying to get into more of that, but I almost, we've talked about like, we really don't need to do a lot of that now because end of July into August, that's going to be, we're going to record there for three straight days you're probably going to get a month full of content out of just that between talking to the cosplayers, talking to comic people that are there. And, you know, our whole thing is we don't have, we don't have really standards for who we want to talk to. No offense. Um, but, you know, we're going to go there with microphones and cameras. And like, if we see someone in cosplay, you know, and they look entertaining, we record worst case scenario. We don't fucking use it. It doesn't matter. Um, again, this is just something that we're doing. It's a hobby, not a career. Um, you know, we, we've already got some ideas for some pranks to play on certain people. I don't want to spoil it now because it won't be as funny when you see it. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's the comic, the comic TV stuff we talk about all the time, the actual comic book side of it, we haven't gotten into, but we're kind of mm -hmm. saving that because we're going to, I mean, every week, Mitch Halleck, the guy who runs it, um, we had four episodes featuring him now because we had a trilogy with him. And then we talked to him about Terrificon. Um, once it was officially, you know, definite that we were going and they were going to have it at Mohegan Sun in Connecticut. And, um, you know, we want to get more into that, but we feel like if we talk about that for all of May and June, it's going to get redundant. We're trying to have comedians on, have actors on. And then, you know, like we had, fr we've had friends on, um, we've had yeah. other podcasts on, we just, we don't want to be, you can have a lot of success doing all comedians every week, but that's not what we're going for. 
we want to talk about anything that we find entertaining. When Ghostbusters yeah. comes out, we're probably going to do three episodes because it's my favorite movie of all time and Tom loves it also. Um, whenever there's a new Marvel series, I want to be able to talk about it. But I also want to be able to talk about stuntmen oh, or jumping through fucking windows or any anything that we find entertaining. If you've Not got really a guy that's stuntman, just people <laughs> jumping through windows. If, if you've got a guy that's a, if you got a guy that's a roofer, but he's funny, we'll have him on. Like we the don't roofer give a that shit. jumps through windows. I want that fucking guy. Book that yeah. guy. He's up that there guy. with the hot mops that slapping guy. each other. <laughs> Give me that guy. So uh, he's we're Amish too. Kind, kind of funny. We might have back to back Michigan episodes here because uh, our next episode is going to be with the two guys that do a podcast out of Michigan. Oh, no shit. Yeah. yeah no, I'm right. on Grand yeah, Rapids yeah. way. The yeah, Sunshine I'm going to be at C2E2 at the end of the year. That's my, that, that's going to be my, my con that I'm signing up for right now. C2E2. That's going to be a big one for me. But we've got, C2E2. I, I mean, that's got a nice ring to it. I like that. Yeah, this is Chicago Comic Con, so that's okay. that's going to be the fun one that will be. Um, and by we, it's like my Instagram family of like different auctioneers and cosplayers, and that small there, community is. That's a big community. Beforehand, you could find a dozen of us if you looked hard. Now you could just, I mean, you just scroll through a stream and you'll see at least 12 promoted ones. You know, I mean, it's, it's they're, they're, they're like Starbucks on Instagram now, right? Everybody's selling comics because at the same time too, a lot of us had nothing to do during COVID and you had all of a sudden the money that you'd normally be spending going out doing other things, can't do now. Well, well, well I'll buy a comic. And I think that um, auctions are addicting and competitive because it also brought in speculators, you know, seeing TV shows and movies are coming out soon and you've got COVID money and boredom lying around. It's just those two things just made it. The perfect grow. storm. Perfect, perfect storm. And so I've got a feeling it's going to be a bubble that's going to be bursting like crazy pretty soon as far as like the bottom falling out of the money that's in there. Um, that's why I'm getting rid of most of my stuff right now. It's just to, you know, sell high, <laughs> pick up again low mm. here in a little bit. But yeah, it's um, I, I I do believe that there's going to be a lot of things that are worse than stuff. But at the end of the day, too, everybody and their uncles getting a show announced now. I mean, it's like television's kind of realized. Well, we've run out of enough of our own ideas. Let's go borrow all those other ones. And I'm okay with that, you know, because I found them to be good, valid good stories when i was younger on both sides i love image i love dc i love i love marvel especially x-men were my jam through the 90s but eventually everybody's going to realize well we're all doing comic book shows people are getting bored with it oversaturated with comic book shows now we gotta lean on something else you know we were written and we went to you know these unscripted reality shows and now we're in comics so I don't know. I, I feel like everything's going to be a phase. So I, I'm, I'm guessing it's going to probably work its way out a little bit less mainstream in the next four or five years, but we'll see. It, and it's funny how they, I mean, they, they started out as comic book conventions and then they morphed into the, the cosplayers kind of hijacked more of those shows. And then the, then the comic books went away. So, which is, which is why this it's so important to this guy, Mitch Halleck, um, because it really is about, the comic book artists at his uh, at his con, but uh, and you say how things would possibly change, and they they may have these already. I don't know, but do they just have cosplayer cons? Yeah, I mean they they they've got they've got whole sections of that swathed out at a lot of these events too. Because I mean at the end of the day too, um, cosplayers. Um, they don't feed off of each other like they do the comic book fans, right? Yeah. The, the, this is, is kind of a, and I hate to say it, but it's almost like a vampiric relationship, right? You know, it's like symbiotic relationship. Um, the nerds need to sexualize something um, right. because they don't always get to. And sometimes when it comes to the cosplayers and those people in those roles, when they come to life, that's just everything that some of these people are looking for. Mm. to look up to and at a cosplayer convention they're just all dressed up and they but they're there as a community they're super supportive the one thing i love about cosplayers is they all love each other they all support each other they are pretty hardcore great in there for each other giving each other tips and when i go to a convention i see the cosplayers they're congregating together because they are people 
but um, you know, the, I think they function best at a convention. So I don't think that you see as many of those because like you're wondering like, do they exist? Well, you know, it's just like, what is it like, pi like baby pigeons? Well, yeah, they're, they're somewhere, but you don't see them because they're very small little <laughs> selective groups, you know, and it's like, they exist, they're real, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they, they really, they, they really need the crowds. I mean, that's how they, they fund their costumes and those competitions because those people come to pay and see them. Right. I was just going to say too, I feel like that's one of those things where if they didn't do it at the comic cons, they're obviously going to have smaller venues, smaller turnouts. And I just feel like the energy, it's not going to be there. Like they, they need the bigger crowds because everything just feeds off of it. And then you get more people doing it. And I feel like if someone tried to do just a cosplayer convention, now granted, it is a big thing. So maybe there'd be a huge turnout, but I feel like it would just be cosplayers. Whereas at a Comic-Con, you might get people that like different movies or, you know, they're there because they found out that, you know, Ross Marquand's going to be there and they're huge Walking Dead fans or whatever it is. I just feel like there's a lot of different people that are drawn to it. Whereas if it's, if it's just for cosplayers, I feel like you're just going to get a million cosplayers in this really not like fabric. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, it, it, um, yeah, no, I, I, I agree. Absolutely. I think that they, it's going to be like, like the local VFW face. for like a hundred people. <laughs> oh shit. If they could get cosplayers just to go to VFWs, I would pay to watch that fucking show. I, I mean, this, right. I'll yeah, finance that. The, the guy that wants the like $4 like draft beer. And, like he's, the he's got to work like his way by like the anime characters and fucking, <laughs> Sexy the Chewbacca. Ones you watch out for. <laughs> yeah, it's the anime ones you really gotta watch out for. They're the crazy ones. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I, I mean, is this difference the like the cosplayers and kind of the Instagram, you know, models, but that occasionally pay somebody to put on a cool outfit versus the ones that do it all the time? Because uh, I feel like that's also been the invasion too, is the Instagramification of the cosplayer community. It's not right. as genuine. Yeah, it. They, they, you can tell like the people that are in it just because they're they're getting into it and they think that they can get Instagram famous or you know at least gain a ton of following from it. Whereas the people that are truly just in love with cosplay, like we've got a, a good. I would. I don't, we don't really like him, but uh, Eli, uh, <laughs> guy that we know, he does some great cosplay stuff. I'm I'm just bullshit. And I, we love Eli. <laughs> Um, but <laughs> he, uh, he's funny cause he, he did a lot of arrow cosplay, right? Tom, mm -hmm. it was yeah. arrow. Yeah. yeah. He did a lot of arrow cosplay and he did some other stuff too. And, you know, he used to get in these big elaborate outfits and he'd put on, he'd put on the he face paint and everything else. And, yeah, yeah. and then one day he decided to do the dude from the big Lebowski and <laughs> he does a great version of it. Yep. It is super comfortable. You're talking like now you went from wearing this plastic armor and getting dressed yep. up to like super casual like he turned into the dude and uh he's on instagram at the dude cosplay and uh he looks like the dude he does a great job with it but it's funny because like he he genuinely loves cosplay that's he got mm -hmm. into it for the love of cosplay he uh he, he was doing all this stuff and i i went back and was looking at his old pictures and he's 100 percent right like you look at these pictures and you're like he must have been sweating bullets and no way he was comfortable. And now he's out there like he's lounging in the most comfortable gear there is. Meanwhile, Batman walks by in a 200 pound fucking suit, sweating his ass off. If he has to piss, he needs three people to help him take it off. Yeah. And Eli's just like far out, man. Yep. yep. These guys are engineers, too. I mean, this isn't stuff you just find. You know, this is stuff that I mean, I, a guy blurred cosplay. He does. Deathstroke, he does Iron Man, so he made his own Iron Man armor. I mean, you know, so you know the exact kinds of people we're talking about, where it's they put in tons of work versus, you know, the Lycra bodysuit. <laughs> they know, went right? to Party or the, City. Or just <laughs> yeah. the nipple covers with a little bit of a thong showing as so and so character. And That's but I'm disgusting. a cosplayer. You're not. You're not yeah, a yeah. cosplayer. Uh, I, uh, I envy them. So every now and then when there's a now, now that I'm going to say it, you guys are going to notice this too. When you scroll through your feed, when there's been a major crisis or a disaster in the world, like where everybody's, you know, posting thoughts and prayers and things like that. God bless those cosplays. You scroll right by, they're doing like a warbler uh, tutorial or they're, they're showing you their new leg gauntlets or the, you know, they put the teeth and like the new lion head that they just, and I'm like, fuck, they're just at home <laughs> doing their stuff. It's, and it's always all the same. 
they didn't care about Kobe Bryant. They did not care one bit. I mean, cosplay, it's just tits and warbler. <laughs> and they don't deviate from that at all. God bless them. No. I think it's great. And the poor guys that do it, too. <laughs> the poor guys. That, the guys, they put in massive effort, but they don't get a one hundredth of the following. Oh, no. Not even a one hundredth of the following. You'll get a guy that spends thousands of dollars to build a custom suit, and he goes to these co- Comic Cons, and there's 10 people going, oh, that's a cool suit. And then there's this chick that puts on two stickers and, and, yeah. and a pair of tight shorts, Bunny and ears, she's got a hundred people lined up. Yeah. Yep. They, they, they're they probably not even actually cosplayers. If you go, oh, who are you supposed to be right now? She's like, yeah, I'm uh, I'm, I'm, I'm nipple stickers, you know, from the thing. You know, yeah. uh, so there's a guy <laughs> there's a guy that built the Hulkbuster armor. I'm sure you've seen that. Yes, I've seen that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this guy, ha- it took him a whole year. Yeah. It, like he, he, he picks the date that he's going to start and he knows a year from then that's when he's going to go to whatever Comic Cons. And uh, yeah, he has a crew. A whole crew that he works with all year long and he, he travels in this giant trailer and they they unload the stuff like roadies mm-hmm. and uh they get him into like he's got some huge space where he has to get into this equipment and people assemble this armor onto this guy um like uh like a, he's like he's a giant like they're, they're putting all these parts and pieces onto him and screwing them into the thing. And then he walks around the suit and the guy, he's like, oh, I got a bad back and a bad neck. Well, of course you do. You're in a 10 foot tall Hulkbuster suit. That's crazy. I've never seen that. I got to look that oh, one up. Fa- some There's, of the shit. That they I'll have watch our episode on Friday because I'm sure you're going to you go. insert I'll a clip it of it. Yeah. yeah. There's exactly. another guy too that does, made a great juggernaut, Red Hulk. Um but I mean, he made, and I think he even made uh, an Optimus Prime. It was ridiculous. But yeah. he does a different one each year too. And you just look at him, and you just like, and you know, a hundred thousand followers, and still great. Like I got, right. I got two thousand five hundred today. I was excited. Now, <laughs> if it was, me, if it was Mrs. Lose, Optimus yeah. Prime, but but you know, somebody that dresses up though as Megan Fox from Transformers, two million followers oh, easily, <laughs> and, easily, and this guy's like building these suits that yeah. could cost more than my car <laughs> right and it's like uh the guy that guy the hacksmith on uh youtube that builds like the real um he, he built the captain america shield that actually magnetizes to his arm mm-hmm. and uh he smashes concrete blocks with it and uh they built a, a lightsaber like these guys but they're engineers like they have mm-hmm. a they have all it's like equipment. the guys that make the Ghostbusters backpacks. Yeah, those those guys are. It's incredible. It's incredible. And the fact the fact that normal people were able to miniaturize all the technology in proton packs and put in the sound effects in the smoke that comes out of them, it, and that came along decades before they even made another <laughs> Ghostbusters film. It's incredible. It's been what five years. Since what? The last Ghostbusters Since, film? No, oh. uh, Ghostbusters two was when? Oh no, the um, women, the the female. Version. I was I was oh, fucking yeah. with him. Oh, yeah. Okay. So he doesn't count that. Okay, I get it. <laughs> what was it? Ninety two. Ghostbusters the Statue two? of Liberty. Ghost of two. Uh, Ninety two. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. The Bobby Brown one. Yeah. Yes. The Bobby well, Brown I guess film. They're gonna have to take them all. Gotta gotta take them all. Uh, those the, both of those movies had amazing songs. I yeah. mean. You think, I, my, you think my like my kid brother could get one of those proton packs? Proton packs are not a toy. I still every now and then when I have my phone on shuffle all you turn up Bobby Brown. Nope. Yep. Higher on. and higher, higher and higher. I turn. Oh, higher and higher. Yeah. Fantastic. Yep. Yeah. Fantastic. Every, every time it comes on, all I can picture is Ray smoking the cigar, spraying. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. That was and such then, an uh, eight, such an A team moment. Venkman fucking screaming from the top of the statue. You know, yep. oh, it's it, again. It's probably I don't know that Ghostbusters one is my favorite movie, but it's it's top five for sure. And the the two of them together, it's uh, that or the Captain- few sequels that's actually a better you know that better or as good. You know, there's yes. not that doesn't happen very often. Right. Yeah. Aliens. Yep. Empire yep. Strikes Back. Terminator. Yep. Terminator. Yep. I, uh, maybe Rocky. 
Well, I mm. see like my favorite Rocky is still Rocky four. So, I mean, I don't know if that counts, mm. but um, you know, anytime we're beating up Russians, you know, that's why I can't wait for stranger things Four. you disrespect me again. Yep. It's all full circle. We, we brought it back. Um, are, are, are you going to enjoy the, Russians? the new uh, black widow then? Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing David Harbor as fat red guardian. And then like, whatever it'll be five months later, he'll come out as thin Russian prisoner, David Harbor. So it's kind of funny to see that, that happen. Um, I think he's got to be close to, I mean, he's probably at his biggest in stranger things season three, but he's still pretty damn big. I've lost my appetite. All right. And black widow. And, uh, it's, it's a big change. It's a good change. It's a good change. Obviously, you know, it's not the same thing, but it's like when you watch, if you watch The Dark Knight and then the next day you watch Vice with Christian Bale, you're like, oh, how yeah. the fuck is that the same guy? Yeah, or watch, watch The Machinist, then watch Vice. Oh, if you're really, no. Yes, that's scary. That's a mess to, to McDonald's. That guy, you know what? <laughs> I, I say all the time, like I don't do one, but I know a, a girl that I went to high school with, she always posted on Facebook every year. Her and a bunch of her friends do a celebrity death pool. I would take Christian Bale every year because what he's swim. done... What he's done to his body, I, I mean, I just can't. I know it's not good for you. I can tell you that. It, it, they know for a fact it isn't. Yeah. <laughs> Phil, Phil, it's, it's Phil has some connections that he works with. They may be able to point <laughs> in the right direction. I'm pretty sure we could tell it has some kind of problems there. <laughs> yeah. Psychological, physical uh, now, too. <laughs> pretty sure his liver is failing as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Schwarzenegger Sorry. and Stallone, yeah. I think, have been photographed in – the same hospital on the same day in two separate occasions having having surgeries they didn't even, they didn't even know they were like oh oh guess who's here knock knock who's here <laughs> Sly Stallone is here it was what what are they doing oh my god no way Arnold's over there they gave me a new hat today that's right it's um, all cybergetic organisms here that's yeah right. Phil from Spectrum Health helped me out yeah <laughs> Rubber baby buggy bumper. Oh my god. Implants. I only wanted a Yankee candle. <laughs> but I mean, seriously, <laughs> at, at some point, you got to repair that heart. Yeah, right? I, I get it. I mean, cocaine okay, and steroids is a bitch. I, I do tend to think a lot of these actors, if they put on or take off immense amounts of weight, it's like they're just chasing an Oscar. I feel like that's just kind of where they're it's at. It's a slam dunk. I mean, Bale didn't win an Oscar for Vice. Well, Vice. Has but Bale, don't has, has Bale won an Oscar? Yeah. yeah. Prestige? Ooh, Prestige? No, he won it for um he won it for uh the fighter. Um I gotta do I my mean, road he's... work. I'll run, I need a fucking road work. Road work? Are you crazy? Yeah, <laughs> I haven't I haven't checked in ages. He's no, I mean I, I, again I love Christian Bale. I'm not criticizing him, but like with the technology they have nowadays, like just just wear a fat suit and prosthetics. Isn't that, I mean, I understand you got to go through hours of makeup, but is that better than months of your life actually getting obese and then having to not be like, I feel like the prosthetics are worth it. Um, you know, other people have done it. So I don't know. No, they, they, they've got filters that can make me look like I have cheekbones. They could do something for Christian Bale. I'm sorry. Yeah, abs <laughs> I mean, they made, they made Chris Evans look like he was five foot three and 120 pounds. And then 10 minutes later, he was six feet tall and jacked out of his mind. I've got news for you. They filmed those scenes at the same time. That's how he looked. They made yeah. Samuel L. Jackson look 25 years younger. Mm. Well, and didn't they even do that with Arnold Schwarzenegger, though, for that one Terminator movie where he's playing like the younger version of himself? They just basically hired an actor and then they framed Arnold's face onto his, essentially yep. with CGI, to make him look like it. I mean, so... Princess Leia was in the last Star Wars movie. I mean, you can do whatever you want to do. <laughs> Luke, uh, Luke showed up and beat the shit out of everybody on, on the, the Mandalorian yeah. at the end yeah, of the, yeah, yeah. the show yeah. there. So no, that was honest, actually that Sebastian. Was that was Sebastian Stan. God, man, I, I wish it. I, I wish that would be a role he would take. I, I, you don't he, think he would? He, he has to. He has to. I don't know how I never noticed how much he looked like Mark Hamill. I never did either until that stuff started going around the internet. I won't yeah, lie. yeah. I I'd like, love. I'd love to say, oh, I spotted it. No, like. When I heard it, I was like, no, they don't. And then I looked at it side by side and I was like, oh, he's Mark Hamill's kid. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's, Mark's it's, in trouble. He's got a love child. Yeah, exactly. He's I outed. Think, I think someone did get off Tatooine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> One of the younglings escaped. <laughs> Jesus. Ray has a brother. But no, I mean, honestly, like I, I know we gotta, we gotta wrap this up soon, but I'm um, honestly last minute. Thank you so much for, for coming on. I mean, we want to talk to someone. It's, I find it so much more entertaining to get someone on, even if we don't know you just talking, talking about comics and comic cons and, and mm-hmm. the stuff you're doing on YouTube people would much rather listen to something interesting like this than to hear me bitch about the walking dead for the 15th time. Like um, I really, really appreciate it. And honestly, anytime that something comes out and you know, if, if it's something you want to jump back on and, and bullshit about, I mean, we're here for it. I usually stick to Guinness because when I do tequila, I lose my pants. That's, well, it is, that's a well-documented fact for me. It's, it's Cinco de Mayo. So in, I, I had to, uh, I had to partake today. Um, oh, cheers, Bill, man. Bill, what's your YouTube channel? Um, actually, right now we're building a new one, so I'm not even gonna get into it. Okay. All right, that's all right. <laughs> I, I, I will. I want we'll, a whole new, fresh start. So okay, yeah. But my Instagram is the One True Nerd King. Okay. And anybody looking for content can always find me there. Okay. Very good. Awesome. Excellent. Well, Appreciate thank you, guys. Phil. Thank you for coming on, and uh, uh, stay yeah, safe was- where you are, and um, good luck with the future endeavors. I'm thinking, Rob, maybe we get some comic all-star someday and we do like a comic panel when something big comes out right i like i like this idea we, we, we get some of the heavy hitters that we've had on and um i mean i think there's there's some movies coming out we could definitely do it for i feel like if nothing else spider-man no way home with the multiverse i think that could be a good one to do it for Ooh, multiverse that's pretty good oh, yeah i have I, a i i have a deal with um cover price uh they're our sponsor Okay. Um, cover price is kind of like the wizard comics of the internet where they, they track all of your comics and they give news and things of that nature. Yep. Um, uh, one of the major owners is a Sony um, VP, uh, Sony Pictures VP. Okay. So we're actually working on some of that Spider Man kinds of angle virtual stuff as well, too. So maybe I feel like team up. All right. Yeah. Talk to you guys about then. We'll get cause... we'll we'll get Mitch Halleck on too. I mean, he's in in Jerry Ordway. If we can get him, he's worked with DC and Marvel, and we're going to be talking to some more Marvel writers at Comic Con. So I like that idea. After yeah. you know, after not that the Eternals and Shang Chi and Black Widow aren't big news or Loki, but I feel like I feel like Spider Man No Way Home is kind of going to change the MCU for quite a while, and it's going to make Doctor Strange: The Multiverse of Madness that much more important. Um, mm-hmm. I, I just feel like that's the next big one. I, I know it's not an Avengers movie, but I feel like it's the next big Marvel movie. There's no Iron Man, no Captain America. Spider-Man is, um, I think it's all on his shoulders right now. Him until, and until Wolverine shows up, Spider-Man's the top dog. Yeah. Well, this might be where that starts to happen, right? You yeah. Know, this yeah. might be the multiverse breaking. That might be how we bring in the X-Men. We know with the Fantastic Four on the way, we saw the sizzle reel. Yeah. So there's nothing out of bounds right now. Nothing. At right. All. Yeah. I, yeah. I think that's, I'm, I'm sure we'll talk to you again before then, but I think that's a great idea. We get a bunch of these guys because honestly, in full disclosure, you will million percent know more about comics than either of us do. We are more of the, the TV show in, in cinematic universe fans. Um, we have, we have some comic history. We read comics as a kid, but like mm-hmm. we weren't, we weren't diehards. So I'd love to get that back and forth between, cause there usually is a little bit of a difference of opinion because I may say, Oh, I love this because I saw it and you go, well, I liked it, but in the comics they did this and that would have been better. So it's, it's nice to get both sides of it. And um, you know, even though I'm a Marvel diehard, you know, I, I'm a huge Batman guy. Everyone thinks I hate it because I didn't like the Snyder cut, but it's, it's nice to get different people. You know, it, I'd rather talk to, I don't need seven guys on here to jerk each other off and go. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. No. That's next week. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I, I don't like to hate on any of them. I'm, I grew up in the age where there was no good comic book, any entertainment on television besides maybe what was on Fox kids on Saturday mornings, mildly. Speaking, so for me, anything DC, anything Marvel, anything Image, all of this stuff is great. I'm, I'm just a fan in general. Yeah. But I do think DC's dropped the ball a lot more often than Marvel. Marvel yeah. did it right. Marvel took the story route. Marvel developed characters. DC tried to jump in too deep too fast. And they're paying the price because they're all over the place right now, in my opinion. Warner Brothers, not DC. I blame Warner Brothers. Yes. Yeah, no, yeah. that is that is the common thing. I regularly bitch about DC. Every time I do it, I mean Warner Brothers. Every single time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, real quick before you go, thoughts on Pattinson as the Batman? Um, 
I'm kind of digging it. I'm kind of digging it. We did know? not. Um, we did not think we were gonna. And then we. I saw wasn't that, going to until I saw the preview. We saw, saw that preview. trailer and the the one scene where he says, "I'm vengeance," and he kicks the shit out of the guy. We. Well, I mean, he texts me right away. He's like, "Watch this." I watched it. I was like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's no sparkly vampire. <laughs> that's, no, that was that was straight ass kicking. No, one hundred percent. And Paul Dano looks awesome as the Riddler. Mm-hmm. It it looks like the Joker equivalent of a Riddler, like a much darker, more serious. I don't have much on Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman. I you know, there's not a lot of footage of her. Colin Farrell. I couldn't believe that was Colin Farrell when I saw. No, that. People on the set didn't even know it was him. It's crazy. There's no, that. that there's insane. that story going around that. Um, somebody in in the Batman that's a you know a big actor. The, this guy was just walking around the set and he was talking to people and making people laugh and she had no idea who the fuck he was, and uh, and she had shot like ten days, and uh, he she's like oh wow he's a very personable you know extra and he's very outgoing yeah it was him in, in makeup that's dope. I mean, that, that's, that's amazing. I mean, Colin Farrell is a great actor in general, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. But um, to see what they put him in or to see what he actually took role wise, knowing what he was going to get put into, that was that was pretty crazy. So, yeah, I'm impressed with Pattinson. If nothing else, I'm sure we'll we'll get some opinions from you when stuff comes out. But I like this idea of the panel moving forward. And if there's ever something you want to bullshit about, just let us know. We're always looking to do it. Yeah, absolutely. I'll be in touch, Mike. Try and drag you guys onto something I'm up to. So absolutely, yeah. we're in fun times. Thanks right. so All much, right. Phil. Thank you very much for having me, guys. Take really care. Awesome. Right. Bye. Thanks, Catch buddy. You later. Hey. Oh, we got a we got another glimpse of Blue Steel just for a second, just for a second at the end there. <laughs> Here, wait for it. Here, Here comes, comes the, the smolder. <laughs> Blue Steel, La Tigra, they are all one look. <laughs> one look. One look. <laughs> um, I thought that was great. That was great. It's. I, uh, I mean, honestly, it's just nice to talk to people somewhere else in the world and the country. And I mean, the first thing you started talking about making the videos and all I, that I stuff. Saw, there's so much in 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 common. Yeah, I saw your face light up when that happened. And yeah, you know well, what? It makes me. It makes me feel validated when. I'm not Someone the only one having out there. the same problem, right? Yeah. Uh, and what he's true. Like I, I, I don't want to say the name cause I know we kind of, it's not really our business to say who you were working with, but I know the video you're talking about. I've watched the video. There's a shitload of companies involved in that. And that, it, it, and he's not wrong. Like these companies come yeah. out and they go, Oh, Hey, we're involved in, it's like Lendl global. We're involved in everything from other guys. It's like, yeah, that's great. But like, you don't have a central spot to go to for your marketing. And it's weird with the healthcare industry. Like how many people really need social media for healthcare, but you know what? Everyone needs a social media presence nowadays. Yeah, I don't but- care. I don't care. If I had a fucking auto garage, I'd have the funniest goddamn clips of my mechanics fixing cars you've ever seen. And I'd put them online and people would at least respond a little bit to it. Like I, right. I get that depending on your industry, it might not be, but look at what Andy Freed does. Yeah. Andy, Andy doesn't just do that because he's a funny guy. Right. Andy knows what he's doing. He's not an idiot. Yeah. I mean, no, I don't care what Kim Wyman says. Oh, uh, who cares what Kim Wyman says? Not Paul it's, Michael. I can tell you a, that much. It's effective. I know first your best friend. It's effective marketing when you combine the entertainment with the information. It, it just works so much better. But um, so even when when I was working with the hospital in Boston and just it was just one doctor working in one one department in the hospital and then once he did it all the other departments who didn't want to have anything to do with it in the first place all came after this guy and they're like oh well how come we didn't do that for our department and then and there was this whole you know you got to go through a board and it's got to get passed through this it's like honestly just just do it just go out there and fucking do it right um, but no, you talk about why don't people, you know, go online to look up stuff for their hospital. Every single time you make, you make an appointment now, they tell you to go to the portal, go to your portal, sign in on your hospital portal. And you don't have to talk to anybody. Right. You know, and nowadays they're doing, they're still seeing patients virtually. Via Zoom. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the 14th episode of the two article podcast. <laughs> We had on a special guest, Phil Taylor, 
to talk about comics and uh, some other things. And uh, thank you for listening and please stay tuned for more. You can catch us where all podcasts are sold and also check out our YouTube channel so you can see how fabulous we are in real life and whether or not we actually sync up our lips with our sounds. Thanks, Rob. See you, buddy. Bye. This episode of the Two Critical Podcast is brought to you by Chris's Clippers. Chris's Clippers, when you absolutely positively have to have someone cut your hedges who has a four-year college degree. Chris's Clippers, call us today. If not, go fuck yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the 14th episode of the Two Critical Podcast. We had on a special guest, Phil Taylor, to talk about comics and uh, some other things. And uh, thank you for listening, and please stay tuned for more. You can catch us where all podcasts are sold, and also check out our YouTube channel so you can see how fabulous we are in real life and whether or not we actually sync up our lips with our sounds. Thanks, Rob. See you, buddy. Bye. Hmm. Ra-da-da-da-doo!